Good afternoon, everybody. Shavua Tov. It's a new week of headlines from Israel and surrounds right here on the Israel Brief, brought to you by Lay of the Land and hosted by myself, Rolene Marx. And we've been waiting so long to say these words. Bruchim Habaim, welcome to Israel. Yes, finally, after 20 months, the skies are open, the airport's open, everything is open. We're just waiting for you. Now, there are criteria if you have been vaccinated and we are accepting Moderna, AstraZeneca, Pfizer and the Sputnik vaccines, you will be allowed entry. Now, of course, there are strict criteria and protocols and what we do suggest is that you check our Ministry of Health or Ministry of Tourism websites for that information or check with your local embassies and consulates to see what the criteria are. Please note that if you are caught breaking the rules with forged documents or haven't uh, filled in the forms or refuse to quarantine if testing positive at a hotel or specific place, you could stand to be banned from Israel for up to five years. But the question remains, where to visit first? Will it be the Kotel? Will it be the beaches in Tel Aviv? Will it be Haifa? Will it be the Negev? Where will it be? All that we know is that we cannot wait to welcome you back to the state of Israel. Now today, welcoming world leaders from around the world, the United Nations have kicked off the COP26 conference on climate change. Just before he left, our Prime Minister, who is heading a delegation some 20 people strong, announced that he would be creating a fund to encourage investment in green technology. Now Israel does lead as tiny as we are in the fields of renewable energy, water resources, food security and others and we are really committed to the fight against climate change. Landing in Glasgow, Scotland, the Prime Minister was welcomed by UN Chief Antonio Guterres as well as English or British Prime Minister Boris Johnson and he will be addressing delegates at about half past four Israel at time. This follows addresses by His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, International Treasure David Attenborough, or Sir David Attenborough rather, uh, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres and various others. US President Joe Biden is also expected to speak. Before he left, our Foreign Minister Yair Lapid tweeted out that he is in full support of uh, Prime Minister Bennett and our delegation as they head to COP26. But it's not all going to be speeches on climate. There will be some high-level meetings taking place on the side, and the Prime Minister has already met with both uh, President Emmanuel Macron of France and Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison. He will have meetings with other leaders like Justin Trudeau from Canada as well as various others. However, very interestingly, he will not be meeting with uh, US President Joe Biden. He will meet with British Prime Minister Boris Johnson. So what we do know is that about an hour or so ago, Prime Minister Bennett sat with President Macron, where they spoke about regional issues, as well as the very vibrant French-Israeli community that serves as a bridge between our two countries. And earlier, he met with Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison. They spoke about Iran, preventing Iran from uh, becoming nuclear, uh, banning Hezbollah in Australia, outright climate issues, regional issues, and Prime Minister Bennett invited Prime Minister Morrison for an official visit to Israel. Now, if you want to hear our Prime Minister speak, don't forget at half past four Israel time, which is at half past two Scottish time, he will be taking to the stage. In Israel's north, the Home Front Command and Rachel unit joined by Magin David Adom Emergency Services and the Israeli police are conducting drills. This is to see what the possibility should a conflagration or war break out between Israel and Hezbollah, the Iranian-sponsored proxy, 
in southern Lebanon. The Home Front Command say they have learned uh, extremely valuable lessons from what happened in May earlier this year when Israel had to engage in the defensive operation operations guardians of the wall and uh, they have been carrying out drills for the last two days on what would happen if no less than 2,000 rockets are fired towards Israeli civilians daily. And of course, we've all been following the proceedings with Ben and Jerry since their very, very controversial decision to pull out of uh, selling their ice cream in the disputed territories. Now, the state of New York have announced that they will become the latest state to enact their anti-BDS laws and will be pulling their considerable investment, which is over $100 million, which apparently is the second largest investment out of a parent company Unilever and Ben and Jerry saying that they are practicing discrimination by supporting BDS. So those are your top stories making headlines right here on this very environmentally friendly Israel Brief. Don't forget to check out our website at www.layoftheland.online. I have an article up there which talks about Mandela Mandela calling for a boycott of the Miss Universe pageant and he got a verbal smackdown from a former Miss Iraq. What's it all about? Check it out over there. It's also on our Facebook page at Lottle's site. If you are visiting our Facebook page and we uh, really encourage you to, was it called Meta? I forget. Anyway, if you are following us uh, or visiting us on Facebook, please consider liking, following and sharing our content. We're on YouTube as well. You can check out your daily head lines at the Israel Brief. That's our channel at the Israel Brief. Please like, share and subscribe by hitting the red subscribe button. And we're on Twitter as well. You'll find us at Lay of the Land 5. That's at Lay of the Land 5. So with the Monday edition on this first day of November, I'm Rolene Marks. This is the Israel Brief and we'll meet again tomorrow.